Welcome to another episode of PSRE Science Made Simple. I'm Chen Hong and I'm a PSRE Science Specialist here at the Pig Lab. In this video, I'll be analyzing a passing examination question on the topic of forces. I've also prepared this question for you to download for free by clicking a link in the description box below. So let's get started. Question 6. Matt kicked the soccer ball as shown in the diagram below. The arrow shows the path of the soccer ball. Now, I want you to scan the question for me and tell me which topic is this question from. From the graph in the options, we can see that this question is on the topic of forces. Do you remember the four types of forces? Let's recap them on the left. What is the force that acts on all objects at all times? That would be gravitational force. How about the force that causes a moving object to slow down? We know that frictional force causes a moving object to slow down. Now, when I stretch or compress a spring, the force acting on the spring will be elastic spring force. Lastly, which force acts on magnetic materials when a magnet is brought near to it? The answer is magnetic force. Since Mac is kicking the soccer ball, let us label the forces on the soccer ball. Let's look at gravitational force first. We know that gravitational force always acts downwards towards the earth, so I'm going to label the arrow downwards. Now, let us draw the soccer ball that is in the air. When the soccer ball is in the air, will there be any gravitational force acting on the soccer ball? Yes, and in which direction? We know that it is downwards as well. Now, let us compare the amount of gravitational force acting on the soccer ball on the ground with the one in the air. Will the amount of gravitational force acting on them be the same or different? Let us ask ourselves, will the mass of the soccer ball change as it is flying through the air? No. And since the mass of the soccer ball on the ground will be the same with the one in the air, the amount of gravitational force acting on both soccer ball will be the same. Next, let's talk about frictional force. As the ball is going through the air, will there be any frictional force acting on the ball? Now, remember earlier in our recap, we mentioned that frictional force will cause an object to slow down. Since we know that the soccer ball will slow down and drop to the ground eventually, frictional force must be acting on the ball. Do you remember the special type of frictional force that acts on objects flying through the air? It is called air resistance. And in which direction would the air resistance be acting in? Let us recall, will frictional force be acting in the direction of motion or oppose motion? We know that frictional force will oppose motion, and since the ball is flying diagonally upwards to the right, air resistance, which is a special type of frictional force, will be acting diagonally downwards to the left. Now let us look at elastic spring force. Is any springs used in this question? We see that no springs are used in this question, so should elastic spring force be involved in this question? No, elastic spring force should not be involved in this question. Now how about magnetic force? Is any magnets used in this question? There is also no magnets used in this question, so magnetic force is not involved in this question. Now that we have labelled all the forces, let's read the question in the paragraph over here. Which of the following graphs shows the most likely relationship between the gravitational force acting on the soccer ball and the distance of the soccer ball from the ground? Now, relationship questions are experimental type questions. So we can spot for the changed and measured variable used in an experiment type of question. I want you to take a pencil and box up the two words between and 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 underline everything that comes after the boxes until the question mark. The phrases in the underline will either be the changed variable or the measured variable. Can you figure out which is the changed variable and which one is the measured variable? If not, do not worry. We can also use a graph in the options to help us. In the graph, we can see that there is a horizontal line that represents the distance. And the horizontal line will always be the changed variable. We can also see a vertical line, and this vertical line represents the gravitational force. And the vertical line always represents the measured variable. So if we transfer our working to the underlying statement above, we know that the distance of the soccer ball from the ground is the changed variable, and the gravitational force acting on the soccer ball is the measured variable. 
Now, should the distance of the soccer ball from the ground affect the gravitational force acting on the soccer ball? Earlier on, we have already discussed that since the mass of the soccer ball on the ground is the same as the one in the air, the amount of gravitational force acting on the soccer ball remains the same. So, will the distance of the soccer ball from the ground change the amount of gravitational force acting on the ball? No. Should we choose a graph that goes up, goes down, or shows a flat line? We should choose a graph that shows a flat line. And which option would that be? That would be option number 3. As the graph in option number 3 shows that the amount of gravitational force acting on the soccer ball remains the same. Therefore, the correct option is option number 3. Thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you would like to check out more videos by us, do click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye!